Good afternoon. They say we're on a tight schedule, and uh, they told me I had no more than five minutes. So uh, between me and the chance, so I don't know if that's going to work out or not, but we'll try to make it happen. How you doing? Dr. Jones just received his first eagle feather from the Lumbee tribe recently. Congratulations. <laughs> and we just gave a, a small gift to uh, President Spellings. It's not eagle feather status, but it's close. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Harvey Goblin, Jr., and I proudly serve as chairman of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. It is my distinct honor to welcome all of you to the open, opening pro program this afternoon. The Lummi Tribe is proud to join in our strong partners at UNCP with Chancellor Robin Cummings and the town of Pembroke, Mary Greg Cummings, to host this, at this stop on the 2018 State of the University Tour. I'm especially humbled to introduce a great leader I have come to know and admire over the past several years, Margaret Spellings, who became president of the University of North Carolina System in March 2016 same year I was elected and the same year that Chancellor Cummins came on. Great, great team, right? <laughs> she has deep experience in public service, most notably as U.S. Secretary of Education and Chief Domestic Policy Advisor in the George W. Bush administration. She is nationally known as a voice for strong accountability in education and thoughtful reform of the nation's post-secondary system. I met President Spellings during her first 100 days on the job as she toured the state to get to know each of the 17 institutions and their communities. During that visit, President Spellings visited the Lumbee Tribe Housing Complex and has shown an ongoing interest in learning more about the Lumbee Tribe, our history, our needs, our customs, and our culture and our vision. Since that initial meeting, President Spillings has been a familiar face in Pembroke in the wake of Hurricane Matthew, October 10, 2016. She visited to offer the full support of the University of North Carolina. Just weeks before the visit, I was honored to deliver remarks at her installation ceremony in Chapel Hill on October 13, 2016. The invitation was evidence of her commitment to inclusion to the Lumbee people and to this community. As I said at her installation, when I think of President Spellings, I am reminded of my late mo mother, Foda, who dedicated her career to public ed education after graduating from Pembroke State uh, College in 1948. My mother was a leader and a mentor to others in the field of American Indian education. I know she would be proud not only of the education available to women and Lumbees today, but also of President Spelling's leadership and all she is accomplishing for this great university system. More to that point, just recently, Ms. Amy Her Dr. Amy Hertel Locklear, an enrolled member of the Lumbee tribe, just like Dr. Jones, it's important to be enrolled, you know this. <laughs> and we're proud that we're enrolled. The Lumbee tribe is lawyered up, doctored up, PhD'd up, it's, uh, it's amazing. But she is chief of staff to the UNC Chancellor, Ms. Kara Folt. That's a big accomplishment for our people and for her as an individual woman of the Lumbee tribe. The uniqueness of the Lumbee is evident in all the universities in, that you are in charge of. Student powwows for the last two months at UNCP, NC State last weekend, UNC Chapel Hill, UNC Greensboro this coming week, all through March and April. There is one at Duke, but we won't, you're not in charge of that one, so we won't talk about that one too much. <laughs> In Robinson County, 23,000 students, K through 12, 47% are Lumbee, 47% over 11,000 kids. At the Lumbee Tribe, we have seven boys and girls club, 500 kids every afternoon and in the summer. And we're approaching our young people from the Lumbee Tribe perspective 500 at a time. I would just had the opportunity to read Dr. Seuss recently to some of the students and they didn't even know the word encyclopedia. So with this, we have students that can't do their homework because they don't have access to the internet. So with a partnership between HUD and T-Mobile, we were able to help our uh, residents under the Lumbee tribe to gain IT access and an uh, iPad for $10 a month. 
these are the things and some of the needs that we face just for education in our local rural area. Project access, summer programs with uh, collaboration with UNCP and Robinson Community College. Without UNCP, it wouldn't be possible for our students to go to summer camps and have these uh, uh, opportunities. Just Tuesday, I spoke with Senator Richard Burr on the phone, and we discussed a collaboration between Dr. Spelling's office, Dr. Uh, Senator Burr's office, and the Lumbee tribe to try to find more grants and funds for education for our students. We are all advocates for UNCP and the educational better betterment of our people. President Spellings, thank you for your commitment to the Lumbee people, to this community and to this region, and to our alma mater, my alma mater, UNCP. You're gonna do great things today and better tomorrow. Please welcome me, help me welcome Dr. Spellings, President Spellings, everybody's a doctor. Thank you, Harvey, for that really generous and warm welcome. Uh, but I'm not old enough to be his mother. <laughs> but I appreciate the, because uh, obviously she was a tremendous woman to raise a son like you. Thank you for your advocacy on behalf of the Lumbee tribe. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your partnership. Truly, it is special. And I was honored to have you be part of my installation. And I don't think that had happened a lot before. So anyway, Godspeed. Thank you for the gift also. Uh, I have had the honor, as uh, Harvey mentioned, of visiting Pembroke many, many times. I feel like a regular around here. Uh, it's a great community, and the, this is, I think, my third time in this facility. Just the energy, every time I come, it's now bursting at the seams with energy and entrepreneurship and uh, a place that is on the move, and you can feel it here. Uh, I've obviously visited during Hurricane Matthew, which really was a, a time of showing who you were the leadership, the integrity, the soul. I got to know Kelly Blue then, obviously Robin very well, and, and you Harvey and many in this room. So uh, I, I feel like a member of this community as well. Uh, I want to give a special recognition to Board of Governors member Kelly Blue, who does a tremendous job serving not only this institution, but our entire state. Kelly, thank you for your service. Thank you for your... And she's lots of fun to be around too. So, and I know you all know that. Uh, Representative Graham was here, there you are, uh, is here. Thank you for your service in the legislature and mayor, wherever you are, Greg, thank you for, there you are, right there on the front row. Uh, anyway, thank you for everything that you do and thank you for your support. Uh, I also want to recognize UNCP student body president, Daher Fernandez. Where are you, Daher? Thank you. <laughs> And, of course, uh, the person who is your leader, Chancellor Robin Cummings, who is a tremendous colleague. <laughs> your job is to make sure he feels loved and supported and don't run him off. Um, anyway, I'm thrilled to be back here. As you all like to say, changing lives through education, that's what you're about. And together, today, we are gathered uh, to reflect on uh, the last couple of years, kind of a progress report on, uh, on the 17 institutions that are the University of North Carolina system. This state, North Carolina, has built, without question, one of the finest public university systems in the nation. And it's getting better every single day, as you can tell by looking around. We have raised our graduation rate by more than six percentage points in the last five years, an improvement that means that more than 2,000 students have earned a degree, 2,000 families who are more secure, and 2,000 lives that have greater opportunity. We have increased our annual research funding by more than $300 million since 2012, and now our system nets one and a half billion dollars in research investments every single year. One and a half billion dollars every single year. We are filling jobs in vital fields, producing nearly 21,000 graduates each year with degrees and certificates in the health sciences, engineering and STEM, an increase of 29% since 2011. That's not an accident and a lot of that work is happening right here at UNCP. We are graduating nearly 20% more Pell-eligible students every year 
than we did in 2011. We are making a lot of progress quickly, upholding our commitment to access and opportunity. And thanks to the legislature's commitment, representative tuition for North Carolinians is flat or falling at every one of our institutions. In these critical measures, we are getting stronger to be sure, but it is no cause for complacency. I like to say we are pleased, but not satisfied. So the question before us now is how are we going to uphold our core mission in this rapidly changing world? How does higher education once again rise to meet our world's challenges and opportunities? North Carolina is the place where we can, where we must meet that challenge. That's why I came. Our state, this state, mirrors our most significant trends affecting the country. Passionate politics, shifting demographics, and an economy growing well overall, but very unevenly. And I don't need to tell you all about that. But we have, as UNC President Bill Friday famously said, a mighty engine for shaping these forces. And over the years, its power and potential has come from its willingness to adapt and reinvent ourselves for the times. Land-grant universities expanded our idea of all useful learning, which is called for in the university's original charter, and recognized higher education's essential role in a modern economy. Campuses were transformed once again when the GI Bill expanded our vision of college and ushered in a broader middle class. And the struggle for civil rights established the opportunity to learn and achieve as the birthright of all Americans. Today, we face another moment of reinvention, a moment that holds more opportunity than downside if we embrace our legacy of change and set higher expectations for ourselves. It's a dynamic that UNC Pembroke knows well and one you have navigated for decades. How do you hold firm to your identity, your mission to serve the people of southeastern North Carolina while adapting to elevate the region and meet the 21st century needs that we have here? But just as the Croatan Normal School has evolved to become UNC Pembroke today, it's clear that change has not threatened your mission. It has enriched and empowered it. It is not a threat, but an opportunity. That's certainly our approach as a system too, guided by the emerging needs of our state and the ambitious strategic plan that the Board of Governors unanimously adopted about a year ago. We are focused on the shared concerns that we must address. And as we move ahead, I see three big issues that keep me up at night, as they say, but also give me confidence in the importance of our mission in this university. The first issue I don't need to explain much about to you, it's economic mobility. To me, the defining issue of our times, the defining issue of this region, of this community. We all believe that the American dream holds that talent and hard work can lead to a better life. But when that belief begins to fray, we all suffer. Our politics become more troubled and we fail to tap the talent the human capital, the human potential that we all need to thrive and survive. Our region of this nation, from Southern Virginia to Mississippi, is struggling with mobility. Children born into poverty in the South have strikingly low odds of bettering their lives. Four of the 10 lowest performing cities in our nation are in North Carolina when it comes to closing that mobility gap. The reality, of course, is all too real here in Robeson County, in Cumberland County, and all across southeastern North Carolina. This area has nearly twice the poverty rate as counties like Wake and Mecklenburg. Almost three in 10 people live below the poverty line, and upward mobility remains among the nation's worst. I know I don't need to tell you that, but I do know that we can change that. Groundbreaking new national data from the past several years confirms that public universities like this one, highly accessible, do remarkable work in lifting low-income students to a better life. 
when we meet our core mission, reaching talented students from all backgrounds, getting them in the door and helping them graduate, college changes lives, lifts families, and transforms communities. Improving economic mobility is an access issue. Earning a place here at UNCP must not depend on the color of your skin, the income of your family, or the zip code where you grew up. But it's also a student success issue. Your odds of graduating should depend on your work ethic and academic performance, not on your parents' resources. And of course, it's a community impact issue. The jobs created by UNCP's business school alumni, the health care provided by your nurses and social workers, the new industries spun out of this incubator and researchers all across the system, they improve the quality of life for everyone, not just those who study here. That is our obligation as the People's University to think beyond those who earn a diploma in our institutions. We are here to serve all North Carolinians, not just those who enroll. And part of that means we must welcome and support our alternative paths to opportunity. I'm not a believer in college for all, and I don't know any university president who is, but I am a believer in education and training beyond high school for nearly everyone whether that's in school, on the job, or through military service. We are steadily losing jobs for high school graduates and gaining work that requires more and more education. And our universities must support apprenticeship programs, grant credit for military service, and partner with employers to offer on-the-job training that counts toward a degree or certificate. We must broaden options because the students we serve today are far more diverse than those we served a quarter century ago. Any vision that's overly focused on 18-year-olds coming straight from high school just doesn't cut it anymore. And to respond, we must take a hard look at our state's full educational continuum from pre-K into the workforce. That's why we formed the My Future NC Commission Today, North Carolina is just one of five states without a statewide goal for how many people must have education beyond high school. I'm glad this is a state as an, who, that's an outlier in issues like affordability and quality, but being one of just a few states without an attainment goal, without a North Star of where we want to go, that's not the kind of outlier we want to be. Right now, we simply aren't well enough coordinated in how we serve North Carolinians from pre-K to college into the workforce. We don't have well-defined, clearly marked pathways to help people navigate those systems and achieve their dreams. My Future NC will give us that goal for how many North Carolinians must have education beyond high school and recommendations for how we can achieve that goal. Supporting that effort will mean that we in the university must do our part to better prepare K-12 teachers so all students are ready for the next step when they graduate from high school. Improving teacher preparation in North Carolina is part of what UNCP's identity has been since your founding as a normal school, and it's a personal priority for me. It's also the focus of a recent report that the system released outlining recommendations for how we can do better. Supporting our statewide effort also means we must work better with other higher education systems, most notably our partners in community colleges, and Brave Step is one model for how to do that. Close integration between a university and a community college that helps a student make that higher ed experience seamless and more affordable is just what we need. It not only sends a strong signal that a four-year degree is in within reach, but also makes the journey convenient, affordable, and effective. Improving our relationships with community colleges like you are doing will allow us to provide true accessibility for every demographic and allow us to be the catalyst for opportunity and upward mobility that we must be. But underscoring the entire discussion of economic mobility is, of course, the escalating cost of college. Opportunity is meaningless if you can't afford it. Happily, 
North Carolina remains a national leader on college costs, and with NC Promise, it's a leadership role that is set to grow. $500 per semester tuition for in-state residents is a true game changer. It's a market-driven approach to ensuring affordability. It's North Carolina's bold opening salvo to the current debate on college affordability. And I'm excited to see the implementation of this incredible program. The extraordinary $51 million commitment by the legislature means students from every household can see a top-notch education within their grasp. The last time tuition and fees were as low as they will be this fall was over a decade ago, 2007, before the Great Recession hit our state and nation. I often say that while our relative affordability is a good thing when we compare ourselves to peers and other states, students really aren't making those comparisons to a carefully selected group of peers. They're comparing our costs with their savings accounts and paychecks, neither of which have kept up with tuition hikes over the past two decades. But with NC Promise, we are resetting the clock and putting our costs back in line with what families can achieve. Combined with simpler, fairer financial aid approaches, NC Promise means we are helping fulfill our constitutional mandate to be as free as practicable to our citizens. We're pushing forward on improving financial aid access across the system. And thanks to support from the Board of Governors and working to create new ways to fund summer school and give students flexibility to manage course loads and graduate on time. And we're working with colleagues and partners across the state to find ways to make financial aid more effective, giving students and families information early in high school so that they can see that the true cost of college is often less than they imagine. As national policymakers work to streamline federal aid, we have work to do here in North Carolina as well, and we're eager to make progress. Our nation's most important pathway to opportunity must become less of a high-stakes gamble for our most vulnerable students, and financial aid is one of the most effective tools we have to get there. I've just run through a wide range of worthwhile work to give North Carolinians a better shot at the American dream, but none of it matters if we don't execute and hold ourselves accountable for doing that work. That's why our second key issue is accountability. Higher education has suffered from a send us the money and leave us alone kind of attitude. What we do is legitimately hard to measure, and many of the benefits that we bring to individuals and to society take a long time to mature. So we've told people to trust us. But I believe that that era is over. And I fully understand the frustration with tests and metrics and the appeal of rhetoric about local control and flexibility. But blaming data collection for the failings of education and the successes is just shooting the messenger. Done right, better data and higher standards are tools for greater flexibility, for better decision making and timely evaluation at the institutional level. Accountability doesn't hinder or scare talented leaders like Chancellor Cummings. It gives them the ability to pursue their goals effectively. That's what our strategic plan is all about and why it won unanimous support from the Board of Governors. I have signed 17 customized performance agreements with each chancellor in the system, all of them embracing measurable outcomes as a route to excellence. Here at UNCP, Chancellor Cummings crafted a performance plan focused on getting more students across the finish line. I want to put everybody on notice in this room that he's committed to increasing the graduation rate by six percentage points, graduating nearly 20% more rural students and more than 30% more low-income students, all while getting more students through in less time and producing 30% more graduates trained in critical workforce areas like teaching, healthcare, and STEM, and all of that by 2022. Remember that, Robin? <laughs> Every morning, he says. 
Our progress will be on display for all to see in newly launched data dashboards showing how each institution and the system as a whole does on a yearly basis. To truly understand our own operation, evaluate our programs, and drive better decision making, we must reform and repair some of the clunky data systems that we currently use. That's why data modernization is our top priority for May's legislative session. With a better understanding of our own enterprise, we can move toward a funding model that better serves our priorities, and as I like to say, puts our money where our mouths are. If we care about graduation rates, achievement gaps, and creating a 21st century workforce, our resources must match our rhetoric and goals. Nationally, we're seeing a deeply discouraging retreat on shared standards and accountability, but I'm proud that North Carolina is charting a different course, pulling back the curtain and letting measurable results guide our actions and tell our story. Our bottom line matters, but so do the values that are hard to show on a dashboard. Fulfilling our historic mission to advance the public good is our third, and in many ways, the most fundamental issue we face. It's the reason this university exists, the bedrock of everything we do. A great many of the people in this state who run businesses, teach our children, heal our families, enrich our culture, and set our public policy will pass through the doors of our universities. What we teach, the behavior we expect, and the standards we model as teachers and public officials help set the tone for our graduates and the world beyond. And that's an enormous responsibility. We live in a world of instant headlines about campus protests and disinvited speakers. A thoughtless remark from a student, a professor, or a university administrator can ricochet across the country, sending everyone to their assigned corners to denounce or defend. What we do every day as educators and public institutions matters. We have to stand behind the core values of free expression intellectual diversity, and patient engagement with new ideas. Our campuses bring together people from different backgrounds to gather in the same place, debate the same books, and navigate the same social life. A college education remains one of the most integrated and intellectually demanding experiences in American life. Our students recognize the privilege of thinking and learning. They want to live up to that gift, to leave the world in better shape than they found it. Anyone who says that college students have lost their heads or their desire to be good citizens isn't paying attention. But I promise you this, students are paying attention to us. They're watching how we lead and govern, how we engage in public debate, how we adapt to the needs of our time. It's up to us to show that public institutions are an ally in the effort to make a better world, that public service is honorable and effective, that trust in our fellow citizens and faith in the country that unites us is vital to any vision of real progress. It's the kind of effort that ensures the civic fabric of a community, a fabric that binds us together and stay strong and vibrant. It's a role UNCP played with pride and honor when Hurricane Matthew damaged that community fabric, and this public institution stepped up and helped lead the response. One person in this room stands out for her leadership during that response, and that's you, Governor Kelly Blue. Lots of people in this room, but you especially. Your tireless work helped bring the state together during that recovery and her efforts haven't stopped since. This university is full of people like Kelly who are here because they want to make a difference. Those who come to work every day in our labs and classrooms, our police departments and maintenance crews, our hospitals and health clinics are here because they want to be a force for good in this state and region. And they are all across this state in all 100 of our counties. Our job as a system is to enable that good work, to provide opportunity to every North Carolinian and ensure economic mobility, to hold ourselves accountable and set higher expectations 
for ourselves and our times, and to commit ourselves to our public identity and take ownership in our role advancing public discourse, debate, and the public good. UNC System President Bill Friday used to issue a powerful challenge to students and one of my favorite quotes. Every morning, he said, a million North Carolinians get up and go to work for wages which leave them below the poverty line so they can pay taxes that finance the education you receive. Your job is to figure out how you're going to pay them back. I'm proud to say that we have been answering that call. And I know I'll be standing here again before you in a few years to, re to report an even stronger, even better University of North Carolina system. Thank you. I would be wise to sit down and shut up. Um, powerful, President Spellings, just powerful. I do want to thank, I think most, if not all of my Board of Trustees members are here, and I thank you for your support and uh, for being here today. I also see a lot of members from the community, uh, my faculty, staff, and especially many students who are here. So thank you for coming here and sharing this very special time with us. As President Spellings, just made clear the state of our university is strong. President Spellings, we thank you for your vision, your leadership, and your service to North Carolina. Please know how much that we appreciate you, including Pembroke, in your tour. I want our guests, I want everyone to understand the significance of this event. You're not delivering a speech at every campus, but you recognize the importance of coming back again to this university and to this community. In fact, this is your sixth time being on this campus. I think I can easily say that no other president um, has had that presence and has taken that interest in our community and in this university. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much. I also want to thank our co-host, Chairman Godwin and the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina, Mayor Greg Cummings and the town of Pembroke. Both these entities always heed the call any time that we need them. And together with this university and the leaders of this county, many of whom are in this room, are solidly committed to the future of this special place that we call home, the great state of Robinson County, as Governor Hunt used to call it. President Spellings referenced the late Bill Friday's description of the UNC system as a mighty engine. And that's how we view UNC Pembroke, a mighty engine of change in southeastern North Carolina. The UNCP strategic plan reinforces that vision and provides a framework for measuring our impact as we work to change lives through education. UNC Pembroke is driving this change on a number of fronts, most notably economic development, health care, and access to education. In fact, where we meet today, the Thomas Center for Entrepreneurship, is a key part of our efforts to spark job creation and investment in this region. By harnessing university resources and expertise, this center enables entrepreneurs to turn their ideas into action and into jobs. Entrepreneurs like the leaders of Lumbee Tribal Enterprises, the first business to graduate from the incubator from the center. It's an IT company that already in the last several months has won federal contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Entrepreneurs like Roderick McMillan, who drilled tens of thousands of holes in PVC pipe and started a hydroponic lettuce farm located about 10 miles from here. And I think I saw Roderick here earlier today. There he is back there. <laughs> With the assistance of the center's executive director, Tom Hall, who's doing an absolutely fantastic job, and his team, MG3 Farms, 
has grown its operation and has become a supplier to the international food company Sodexo. Sodexo is our contractual food service supplier, international, tens of thousands of employees, and UNC Pembroke's cafeteria proudly serves Roderick's lettuce. You sampled it today if you tried the lettuce wraps earlier in the afternoon. Another Thomas Center client, Millard Locklear, I think also is here. Millard is here. <laughs> Millard owns New Ground Farms, and his farm grew the sweet potatoes for the sweet potato pies that you enjoy. So Roderick and Millard's story, stories are a testament to the power of the innovation, to innovation, agriculture, and hard work, all found in abundance across Southeast North Carolina. And their success exemplifies how this university is transforming this local economy. Now, sometimes that transformation occurs one job at a time as businesses grow here in the incubator and as our expert cons cons consults out in the field with uh, entrepreneurs like Roderick and Millard. The transformation, though, is occurring at a higher level and on a larger scale as UNC Pembroke meets critical workforce needs, a commitment of the, UNP, UN, of the UNC strategic plan. And in southeastern North Carolina, there is no more critical workforce need than health care. UNC Pembroke is producing a pipeline of professionals in a number of health-related fields, including nursing, and clinical mental health counseling, and we want to do more. In fact, we are holding ourselves accountable to do more. We appreciate President Spelling's engagement around the needs and possibilities of how UNCP can play an even greater role in improving health outcomes throughout our region, ensuring that Southeast Eastern North Carolina and especially Robinson County no longer finds itself on the wrong end of all the health rankings. And that our friends and our neighbors, people that we know and we live around, can live healthy and productive lives. Folks, the lifespan of an individual born in Robinson County is over six years shorter than a similar individual born in Wake County. Over six years. I agree completely that access to a quality education should not depend on your zip code, but neither should your access to quality health care. Health care and economic development are two of the ways this part of this mighty engine is changing lives in southeast North Carolina. And this engine is now being turbocharged by an incredible, unprecedented opportunity called NC Promise. From day one, more than 131 years ago, UNC Pembroke has been a trailblazer in expanding access to education. NC Promise builds on that legacy, increasing affordability, and as President Spelling said, putting a college education within reach for more low income and rural students, which is a pri priority for UNC Pembroke, for myself, for President Spellings, and the entire UNC system. In order to achieve our collective vision for UNC Pembroke, whether increasing access or graduation rates or achieving any of our priorities, we must measure what we do and do what we say. So the bet was at during which speech would the train arrive? <laughs> it's, <coughs> it's coming. President Spellings, and this is appropriate. I'm, you know, welcome to my home. This is appropriate. <laughs> President Spellings, I applaud your focus on accountability, and I take seriously the commitment I made on behalf of this university by signing my name next to yours on our performance agreement a year ago. We know you will hold this university accountable, but more importantly, we pledge to hold ourselves accountable. And this is where I'm building up to a, a, a point. <laughs> Mayor, take care of this, okay? <laughs> we pledge to hold ourselves accountable because the stakes are high. We have current students who are relying on us. We have future students, some of whom are sitting in the kindergarten classroom right now as we speak. And the people of this region are relying on us. 
with your continued support and the support of everyone in this room, we will make UNC Pembroke, this mighty engine, live out its destiny. This engine will create jobs. This engine is going to improve health. This engine is going to put a high quality education within reach for everyone. This engine will ensure a bright future for Southeast North Carolina. President Spellings, thank you again for your visit. Thank you for your commitment to UNC Pembroke, to the people of this region, for your leadership, your friendship, and more importantly, your confidence in this engine. Thank you. We appreciate every, everyone again taking part of your day to join us. It's uh, Friday afternoon. Thank you. Before you leave, please sure, be, uh, be sure to try one of Roderick's wraps and Millard's sweet potato pies over there. Now that you know how important those two items are to the economic viability of this, count, of this region, go eat. Thank you for coming. Have a great rest of your Friday and weekend, and go Braves. <laughs>